Dr. Kande Yumkela, welcome to Focus on Africa. Thank you for having me. And the opportunity to respond to some listeners' questions which have been sent via social media. And I'm going to start with uh, Mahmoud Idris Tarawali. He says, we remain a divided and polarized nation after the elections with the pro-SLPP Southern Eastern Bloc on the one end and the pro-APC Northwestern Bloc on the other. Sandwiched in between those two poles are the NGC and the C4C. What is the NGC doing within this divisive political context to heal the country and build a true, inclusive and cohesive national Sierra Leone? Well, first of all, thank you for having me in your studios. I think that's a very uh, good question because indeed we're polarized. The difference in the final outcome of the elections between the two uh, SLPP and the APC is just about 2%. So we're almost divided in the middle. Our role in that context is to be a constructive opposition. So yes, as a constructive opposition, we will support good initiatives from the government to rebuild our economy, rebuild the nation. And at the same time, we will be, try to be a watchdog to make sure they don't begin to do the same things the old regime was doing. So first of all, demonstrate that being in opposition does not mean you are always obstructive and continue the polarization. Demonstrate to them that it makes sense that when something is good for the country, you work with the government for the sake of Sierra Leone. And our mantra is Sierra Leone first. Uh, let's go to another one from MYK Berewa. What are you contributing towards post-election peace? Well, part of what we do now, again, we advise behind the scenes. We also talk about country first. We demonstrate what country first means. People see me in parliament interacting with the APC openly. And when we have common issues on rule of law that we agree on, I, I, I speak with them. They have seen me openly supporting free education, the agriculture drive of the, of the government as well. Part of it is to, to show them that politics has to be different. Dr. Kande Bokari Arun Dauda, uh, he says that uh, what's your assessment of the current government's performance? Well, we have six months. Let them wait till I, I do my own interviews in Sierra Leone about my evaluation. But let me put it this way. We've seen the right signals about corruption, education and uh, recovery in the productive sectors. We have to see the government do more on uh, managing violence and intimidation. Uh, we've seen a spike in violence. We have to see robust action by the government. We have to see senior government officials, including Mr. President, saying, I will not tolerate violence. So we need to see more on that. We need to see more on inclusive governance. We have to see a real reaching out. We have to see on quality also of the nature of people who will be leading sectoral investments. People, uh, so people, it looks as though there's a lot of work to be done. Of course, and that has to be expected. They've just done six months. My only hope is that they will listen to constructive criticism. Constructive criticism helps the government to check what they're doing. In fact, uh, Unisa Patrick Kamara is asking, he says that you've been quiet recently. So why and what are your plans for 2023? Yes, I, was, I have been quiet for good reason. You lose an election, you have to reflect. What did we do wrong? What did we do right? How did the others outwit us? And looking ahead, how do we plan better? And for me, pulling back a little bit meant I needed that time of reflection. Second, we need to rebuild our party structures. So yes, we, we needed that moment now to reorganize, but we've also been vocal. What my, fault, my supporters and others have to understand, we are not campaigning anymore. They can't expect us, expect me as, a, as the leader to be on radio and TV and rallying. Uh, we're building our party. We're also being constructive within parliament. We've spoken out when they do the wrong thing. And you describe the current status quo of the movement locally. The movement is strong. I tell you that I have a, long, a lot of young people who come up to me, university kids, others who were in our, our rallies and saying to me, Dr. Yum Keller, we believe in what you and NGC proposed. And it is for us. We know you were talking about our future. And I used to tell them about uh, um, um, in intergenerational equity. That if we do bad things, they haunt you later. If we do the go good things, it is for your future. They believe it and they're there and we're going to activate them. I'll continue with my public lectures that I used to do around universities and around the country. I'll continue advocacy. 
Uh, in fact, as I say, uh, 2019, we begin again, out, out uh, door to door, talking to people, talking to the young generation, because really it's about their future. Our generation, uh, we're almost gone. Uh, it's about their future. Uh, 42% of that population is still below 18. There's, uh, this is from Melvin Shati. Uh, it says that uh, with more than a decade's experience working in the United Nations and our member of parliament, what are your plans to improve the social economic lives of people living in your constituency? And what contribution are you making towards supporting the government of Sierra Leone in terms of improving the country's energy sector? Well, already, uh, um, again, that's, that's my uh, major challenge is now. I'm representing a constituency. I have to make a difference there. We have to help the district, and we have to help the nation and the party. So it, it's, it's a major uh, responsibility to do all of that at the same time. In my constituency, we've introduced a number of initiatives there. We've, we've trained some women on horticultural production to diversify their, their incomes. Uh, we have now, uh, now given cashew seedlings to about 150 farmers so that each of them will own an acre of cashew, again, so that they don't depend only on rice. We, we're launching a fisheries initiative. We also depend on fishing in that community a lot. We've supported the government in, in free education in the constituency. We are the first in the country to invite the Minister of Education and his whole team to my constituency. Yeah, and they're using that as a model, in fact, to go to other constituencies around the country. But we're doing the same in the district. And, of course, nationally, yes, um, I'm talking to the government on energy issues. The joke is that when the president read his speech in the UN, uh, we met in the, in the corridor after he had read it, I said, thank you for energy. He said, I know you'll be happy about that. So what am I saying? He's committed, he realizes, and I'm happy he and many heads of states around Africa understand that without access to reliable, affordable energy, our economies cannot move. And he's put out a plan. Uh, we'll go back to support that plan. I'll visit with the Minister of, he uh, Minister of um, Energy as well to talk about energy and his plans to understand what he wants to do. We needed to give them time to settle. But one advice I gave them, which I see them following, I said it to the president. I said it to the minister of energy. Don't be in a rush to throw out what the others did. Big energy projects take on average three to five years to incubate and give credit where it's due. So our people understand that to solve energy access, it is not overnight. Second, I hope they understand also that it's not just the big grid based initiatives. You can provide basic lighting to communities within five years. So nobody lives in darkness. And so it's that inclusive approach, bottom up with distributive energy services, and of course, the large scale energy projects. So yes, I'm on the energy committee, uh, as well in parliament, I'll be working within that. Um, the chairman of that committee already told me on Tuesday, that I, I will be leading a team to look at the projects that are going on, on decentralized mini grids, and off grid solutions for households. So yes, I'll be proactive in that as well, because I advocated for it over 10 years in the UN.